it turns out that everyone here knows this gentleman except me. <laughs> yeah. Do you know this gentleman? Well, I've seen him at the show, shows. <laughs> everyone knows him. So I'm, I may do this introduction at the next time at the main oh, program, program. Oh, no. for a bunch of people. I don't, I don't know. Rachel and I don't know. Yeah, I'll listen. Okay. <laughs> We're very lucky to have uh, Mr. A. Ivar. Ivar. Manny, M-A-N-N-Y, he goes by this. Manuel Ivar, he works for the technology industry. He's originally from the Dominican Republic, and he says, a grower's paradise. Isn't that the truth? Here you are trying to grow out in Dallas. That's right. This one, he, he, yeah, he came up from Dallas. He's been growing orchids for approximately 26 years, and the genus that got him started was Dendrobium, which he specializes in, Dendrobium phenolopsis. He's a member of the American Orchid Society since 1997 and the Greater North Texas Orchid Society since the year 2000. He is, of course, an accredited AOS judge. And he serves currently as, as a chair for the AOS Dallas Judging Center. His current research includes the orchids of the Dominican Republic, hi, Jared, for which he has gone in numerous orchid collecting trips back to his home country. He's been extensively involved in the judging of many shows around the United States, including the Miami International Orchid Show. But it existed. It doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. Oh. And uh, most of the South, most of the Sorobo shows, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Shreveport, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Arkansas. He's also served as an international judge for orchid shows in Taiwan. 2010, 11, 13, 15, 16, Peru, Costa Rica, Colombia, plus the way I say that, Colombia. That's right. As well as the World Orchid Conference in Miami in 2008, Singapore 2011, South Africa 2014, and Ecuador 2017. He was the judging chair in Ecuador. He's affiliated with the Southwest Regional Orchid Road Association. And within this association, he belongs to the Publications Committee and currently serves as the webmaster. He has given several orchid seminars and potting classes at Smith & Hawkins, North Haven Gardens, and other popular gardening stores. He offered a series of orchid workshops for Range Rover U.S. as a part of the Land Rover Destination Tour. He is a regular lecturer for the local orchid societies and visiting speaker for societies around the country. So let's welcome Manny and give it up. So when I was talking to Keith, let me start with my phone. So this is a live presentation, right? So for those of you that, there's some, some of you that have known me for many years now, uh, as I come back to to Oklahoma and to the show and also to speak. Uh, the one thing, the one thing that has not changed is my accent. I still have an accent. So. <laughs> As you took it, if you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't met me before, yes, I'm from the Dominican Republic and uh, I do have a Latino accent, which is fine. And as I start getting excited about orchids, I just start talking faster and faster. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you guys slow me down if you feel I'm talking too fast, but. Uh, when I was talking to Keith, um, we were talking about what, you know, the drawing was he contacting me about. We'll talk later about the drawings. But he said, well, why don't you do two programs? I'm like, oh, I can do three, four, I don't care. I can talk to you about orchids all day long if you want me to. So we'll talk about, we chose to talk about the orchid show in Taiwan and the Taiwan breeding uh, trends. I was there uh, uh, two years ago, the latest show. This is uh, an example of one of the exhibits that you see in Taiwan. I'm in front of the exhibit, um, and that kind of like uh, gives you an idea. And I'll do a plug at the end for the World Orchid Conference. If you ever have the opportunity or have thought about going to a World Orchid Conference, the 2020 World Orchid Conference is in Taiwan. Uh, so if you like to travel, uh, like me, uh, and you can think about traveling, that's going to be probably one of the biggest world orchid conferences the world has ever seen and will see because of uh, the government pumps a lot of money into this event in Taiwan and uh, what I tell people is 
Um, I'll do the plug before I go through this, but in 2020, you have a very unique opportunity if you are a orchid fanatic. If you time it right, you can fly to Tokyo from Dallas, direct flight, like many hours. <laughs> but if you can time it right, you can go to Tokyo and catch the last week of the Tokyo Dome show, which is the biggest show in the world, without question. Biggest orchid show in the world. And it's in the Tokyo Dome, it's a huge venue. Uh, so you catch that show, and then the World Orchid Conference is the week after the last week of the Tokyo Dome. So you can spend two weeks in Asia, and it's okay, they do have McDonald's and chicken and everything. You don't have to eat weird stuff. So, uh, and you can in two weeks catch those two shows, which are the two biggest shows in the world in 2020. It's a very, very unique opportunity, so just think about it. If you decide that there's something you want to do, talk to me in the break or whatever, I'll tell you more about it. So, I'm definitely going. <laughs> uh, so, I want to talk a little bit about orchid breeding in Taiwan and what's going on in Taiwan. So, in Taiwan, how do they do it? You go to the show and you see these phalaenopsis that are like just perfect. Uh, and many, a lot of flowers. So, usually they take these phalaenopsis plants and they put them in what they call a growing greenhouse. So, the temperature is constant for two or three years on that plant. And you don't get the temperature drop that the phalaenopsis needs to bloom. So, that plant just grows, 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 and never blooms. And then they put it in what they call a blooming greenhouse, in which any time of the year they can do the 20 degree differential between day and night. And the plant just explodes with flowers. They do educate the inflorescence, so they actually have these arched wires where they can make it just spike like that. And, uh, you know, they, they're, in my opinion, artists in doing that. So it's kind of crazy. <clears throat> Um, you know, let's keep this plant. This is one plant. Oh, wow. This is a one plant with one, two, three, four oh inflorescences on the plant. Okay? So that's what you see when you go there. And you have, of course, the bunch of buds and whatever. But that's what, when you go there as a judge, you're like, wow. Uh, but let's keep this in mind for a little bit, okay? I'll talk about this later. They have state of the art greenhouses. This is uh, Norman's greenhouse uh, from orchids.com, Norman, Norman Fang. Uh, it's one of these greenhouses. It's like three million phalaenopsis plants. You can literally stand in this side of the greenhouse and every leaf will face the same direction. Every leaf, it's just the exact same. Every leaf is growing a new leaf in the same direction. It's just perfect. Uh, it's a uh, Granite floors in the greenhouse, just immaculate. They get those plants only get watered like every ten days. <coughs> they do, they leave a little gap in the phalaenopsis pot, in those plastic pots, little almost disposable pots. Uh, forgive me, my French or my, you know, or now I'm saying something wrong, maybe not politically correct. I call them the condom pots <laughs> because they're like this little plastic. It almost looks like a like like very, very brittle plastic. But yeah, they, they, they leave a little little gap on the top, like one inch, mm -hmm. and they hand water every plant. Right. This is hand water. Wow. How, how many plants did you say was in there? Like around three million I mean, plants. I mean, three million plants. That building? That building. Wow. It goes on and on, both directions. That's all my camera could capture how when big, I was there. How big is it? Oh, it's uh, like football, football field. field. Just about all controlled by computer, all everything, sure. uh, elements, everything, temperature, everything perfectly controlled. Um, but that's what they call a growing greenhouse. You will not see ever see a spike in this greenhouse of flowers ever, because it's always te constant temperature, always growing and growing those plants. They can go from flask to that size of plant in a year and a half. How warm do you think? If we were to try that at our house to grow for two years. 73. 73? Constant. Every day, every night, okay. perfect temperature. And they do uh, probably 12, they, they, have, they have auxiliary lights, they do 12 to 15 hours of light. It's just constant, plants constantly growing. 
constantly developing. So they, they're not in the tropics, are they? Taiwan's not in the tropics. Taiwan is subtropical, so Taiwan, and well, this is in Taichung, which is south of the island, and it gets, it doesn't get as hot. Okay. So they, they do, they, they're able to keep that temperature constant very, very easy. And they do, you, so they use supplemental lights also? Supplemental lights, supplementer, uh, uh, AC, supplemental everything. Oh, wow. This is perfectly temperature controlled, the screen has. Mm. Right? Uh, you can oh see there, gosh. too. I mean, it's just... That's good. Yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely crazy, incredible. I like these. I got these from Norman, and I use them in my greenhouse. You see those pots, those trays? They have single, single row trays, yeah. so each plant is perfectly aligned, and they can move them around in groups of four, and it makes it easy. So you have these um, Asian ladies, uh, Taiwanese ladies, that work there with a big old wand watering every plant. So all they do is they fill up that inch of space between the growing media and top, and the, the water just sinks perfectly into the moss and you don't even see almost water dripping underneath. It's just so controlled. It's exactly what the plant needs, when it needs it. They have schedules, rotating schedules, and those benches roll, right? So they move this way and this way, okay? Mm. So this is what a perfect greenhouse looks like. Mine does not look like that. No. <laughs> I am a very lousy grower. What, what humidity do you think they keep it in? It's like uh, between 70 to 80, it's perfect humidity. I mean, like, you control every element. This greenhouse, you're God, pretty much. Yeah. You control every element, okay? Uh, you can see there, you can see the heating underneath with the, with, the, with the pipes right there, see down there. And like I told you, these are rolling benches, so they can put two and two together, they separate them so they can go in between. And these ladies, they just go with the one, like cluck, 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 it's like block work, but it's hand watered. You said they water every 10 days? I'm not saying that they water every 10 days. They water when it needs it. Generally every 10 days. Okay. But it's when it needs it. Again, they're doing this a macro scale, talking about three or four million plants in this greenhouse. Right. But they're, they're planted in sphagnum, so that's quite why. Sphagnum, there's planted in sphagnum moss, so uh, that's why they don't have to water as much. Yeah, okay. This is Sakari and another judge walking there. I just took pictures just to show you guys. Sure. Like, look at underneath. I mean, it's just, they, it, it's immaculate. There's not a single anything. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you get your own deep of <laughs> Okay? Yeah. You can see the plants. You can see the root system. And this is what I was talking about. I do that in my, in my, in my phalaenopsis now after I saw that in Taiwan. I, you know, I leave a little, I, I, put, I do grow mine in sphagnum, and uh, you see this uh, space here? Mm. This is all the water they put up to here, and that's it. And it just trickles, and it waters perfectly the growing medium. You don't see a single root, you know, you kind of see some, but in general, you see the plants, roots are going into that pot. Because you don't have water, they don't have to go get water anywhere, they get it from the pot. That's what you want when you grow it. So then they pack them into uh, you know containers and they ship them to US. So when you're at the show, I just wanted to show again that section just so you see how they grow. It's just science. Now are these plants destined for the US? Yeah. All of them. All of them. Or Japan or Asia or sure. Europe. <clears throat> He, he has three or four of these greenhouses. It's just Are there any particular buyers here in the U.S. that buy from them? Well, yeah, I mean, you have, our, you know, Matsui buys from Norman. I can give you the whole yeah. flow chart of all the growers and the vendors or whatever, but it's probably not relevant. And that's kind of the growing technique nowadays for most of the commercial farmers, big operations from the whole world. Matsui does this in U.S., in California. Uh, and then there's a guy in Houston, three markets, they grow like this. But this is uh, what I wanted to talk about on this part before I show pretty flowers was the growing technique. That's how they grow for the nuts. Uh, that it's just the plants are perfect. And, you and, and, and talk about repotting. You pull it out, you wrap a little sphagnum moss, you slip it in a quarter inch bigger little plastic pot, and you're done. That's it. 
Now, I've been somewhat successful growing like this. Uh, I've been able to keep four to six pairs of leaves on each of my plants after I started doing this. But you've got to be careful with everything else, though. Um, Fuller's Yellow Sunset, you're going to see a lot of stuff that we've already seen in the US. This is two years ago. But those um, yellows with more red or orange lips are coming into fashion now. Um, they do the show in Taiwan like they do the Tulsa show. It's a bench show. And then you have another stadium in Taiwan where they do the exhibits. So what we judge is just the bench show, which is where the individual plants are. Um, yellows were really hard to get in front of the but nowadays we should not accept anything but a perfect yellow. Look at the form on that flower. It's just a perfect triangle mm -hmm. on the sepals and the petals, reverse triangle. It's like, it doesn't get any more perfect than that. I do not like the notches on the petals, but I'm okay. willing to take a couple of points for that and still give it an award. So we don't give, uh, last year I was there, we gave 132 AOS awards. Wow. Uh, just the just for phalaenopsis? No, in general, the whole show. Oh, okay. So probably 90 phalaenopsis awards and really? 40 of the rest. Because it's mostly a phalaenopsis show. Oh, were there yeah. any FCCs? Yeah, they were around like 8 or 10. Right. So, usually there's 8 to 10 FCCs every year. We don't give any HCCs. We only give AM and up. Because the quality is so high that we, we don't waste time. If we were to our HCCs, we would our HCC to every plant. Yeah. Right. So honestly, we just don't waste time. Gold Princess, Fuller's Gold Princess, you're getting a lot of the big phalaenopsis bred into the small multiflorals. So you're going to get a lot of new colors in the multiflorals, not in phalaenopsis. Um, this is a white ribbon for the ribbon, the show ribbons judging. Um, Senior Golden Beauty, Sun One Cricket. So that's what I'm talking about. So now they're trying to, the, the Taiwanese are trying to do a lot of miniaturization of the of the big phalaenopsis, which I like. So you get a lot, you're starting to get a lot of these yellows and pink lips and red lips and into the miniature, more small phalaenopsis, which is really neat. Dragon Tree Gold also putting, trying to do the miniaturization of the phalaenopsis into the more novelty crosses. So those waxy yellow phalaenopsis flowers, but into a multi-floral, so you get more flowers. Trying to do that as well. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorites, Ting Shin Spring times Maki Watanabe. Maki Watanabe is an old, old, very light yellow cross. And when they put it in Ting Shin Spring, they were able to, to stabilize the yellow very well, but you just get this white flush in the middle, which I think is really pretty. Um, one of the things that I, uh, I visited Ting Shing Nursery. He's one of the best phalaenopsis hybridizers in Taiwan and in the world. So he's the one that's doing a lot of novelty, new stuff, right? But you go to his greenhouse and he stays at the, it's not a big greenhouse, probably around, I want to say 2,000 square feet. And uh, he stays at the entrance of the greenhouse and think about this, it's just shade cloth and some rice plantation around his greenhouse. Yeah. So it's like perfect humidity every time. And uh, you are there, you just look up there and you drool about these new crosses that he's done. But a lot of people just buy from him and they grow the two million plants to sell it, right? After they get it awarded. But he stays in the front door. There's only one way in and one way out of this greenhouse. He stays in the front door and you raise a plant and you're like, oh my God, look at this seedling, amazing. And you look at him. And she just sways and he goes, or, 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 it's one thousand, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, five thousand oh dollars. Oh yeah. But think about it: a commercial grower that finds something of this quality will pay him for one plant five thousand dollars, and they just clone the heck out of it yeah. and make three million plants, you know, and sell them for thirty bucks. You do the math. <laughs> yeah. Tinshin popularity, AQ. Tinshin surprise times Tinshin champion. That's an AQ that we gave. Uh, and remember, an AQ needs 12 plants of quality, which was at least one of them needs to be awarded an AOS award. This is one of them. So this is what I'm talking about. You see, these are rather, they're not totally fluorescent, as if you notice. 
So I tried to do more of a reduction, but this is one of them uh, to me that's stunning in the Harley Quinn or uh, you know, high resonization. This is another one of them. Got a diamond dust on top of that texture, and those flowers are really, really pretty. It's like waxy and then diamond dust at the same time. This is another one of them. We awarded a bunch of them. Novelties, a lot of stuff coming in the novelties. Uh, for Mosa Sunrise, this came to US already, we've seen it here. But those petals are just almost a circle. And look at that inflorescence. That's what you expect always, that sh perfect shingling. Don't get upset when you go get a phalaenopsis award or ribbon or whatever if you have a plant. That's what good shingling needs to be in phalaenopsis. When you have that presentation and those flowers are just like soldiers, and there's no overlap, very little overlap between one flower and another flower. That's what you want. Ox pot queen. Ox is another line of breeding from a different hybridizer. I like, like I said, the oxes. Fuller's green apple, I do have this plant. I love this plant. This is a really bad picture. It's more green than that. Novice green eagles, so you got a more of a novelty, more mustardy colors coming. Um, uh, Merida green, see, you've probably seen this already in, in, that, in the US. I love that flush on the petals there. Uh, Ming Xing Evil, uh, more of a traditional paint, but look at the size of this guy. Obviously, it's 58, 90 plants. Yeah. Wild plant, uh, 10 pair of leaves. Ting Xing Spring Up, Times of Abilities, love this, very small flower, but just, just stunning as far as form. It's a bad picture, but. That's the best I took. I mean, you're there taking pictures, judging for two days. Uh, Phantom of Green Road, Maple Bridge, uh, very really tiny flowers, kind of like a little bit of that the right is, right? The right is carry my type of cross, very, very small flowers, but just this color that they're putting into the miniature is really cool. Mm -hmm. And you see it there with tons of flowers. That's a warm plant. Host, Dreamy Jade, lots of good stuff in the yellows. Contrary Radashari times Timothy Christopher, just Timothy Christopher to make the small plants. I, I really like that. I really love the fact that I was able to see a lot of small miniaturization of the traditional phalaenopsis. So all the colors that we used to will start seeing more and more in compacts as in the next you know, year, we started seeing them already in the US. This was 2016, <coughs> two years ago. Even this type of thing, Chiara Ziva, still a little bit of a spike, but trying to get it smaller. Perfectionist, more novelty stuff, Gigantia line of breeding. And let me tell you, trying to get that Gigantia into the line of breeding and make it into a regular plant is very difficult. Gigantia is very dominant, so you get these humongous leaves every time you cross with Gigantia. You don't want that. So this is a good example of what they're trying to achieve. I love Ching Chen Piano. You probably have it in your collection. Not just go buy it. But it comes in so many variations. This is the same cross. That's the one that I got there to see. I really like that. And Tingxin Fantastic World, another AQ. It's like he gets AQs every year. And this is the whole variety of this Tingxin Fantastic World. You get all the solid wine, you get some spots, you get different concentrations of spots. You get, it's just all over the place. I like Ar Arakaki Spring Fairy, <coughs> this plant. Uh, it's already here. We've seen it in US already. Uh, this, that one with the flush pink in the middle, I like a little more. And of course, the uh, pansy, the orchid phalaenopsis, right? So we're starting to see more and more. Some judges absolutely hate them. I, I think they're cool. Uh, I have a couple. But they're starting to put them into everything now. So you're going to start seeing more stripes, more Harley Quinn, pansy lips. You either love them or you hate them. So, to me, that looks weird. 
Yeah. But it's new line of breeding is uh, that opening that lip. Uh, and you see the callus and everything there and the column by itself in the middle. The pansy lip orchids, I I'm okay with them. I, I, I don't I don't think that's actually a teaching nursery by the way. So I wouldn't mind helping you. I don't know. <laughs> Multiflorals, what I'm talking about, tons of different colors in the multiflorals. You can see the, the show. They try to put everything together for the same category. So all your novelties, or your oranges, or your pinks, or your whites. But look at, I took those pictures just to give you guys an idea of, look at the size of the plants. They're very, very compact plants. So we're going to start getting all these colors that we used to in the big floppy Phalaenopsis, but in compacts, uh, they, they, they just—it's just a ra the rain right now to be able to put in your window sill and your new apartment in Taipei. Mm -hmm. So that's why they go into that. It's, uh, it's really driven by the commercial and what commercially sells. Deerling cherry, one of my favorites. I love that white in the middle around the base of the car, you know, around the base. Uh, really cool. Looking uh, burgundy. FCC. These are small. These are, and I remember the description. You know why? Because I wrote it. <laughs> 106 flowers and 21 buds on three inflorescences. Mm. So that's 130 flowers divided by three. So do the math. Roughly 45 flowers in each spike. Um, Happy Cupid, so started getting some of these cute little things. But that lip is just yummy. Summer berry, thanks for most of cranberries, but your big harlequins now into tiny, compact, still not as compact, but multi branch, multi florals, uh, phalaenopsis. Look at my hand. Just want to give you an idea on size, right? So that's my hand. That's the size of the inflorescence, the whole thing. To me, that's really cool. We didn't get all that stuff now. Uh, starting to get it. Norma has brought a lot of the stuff into the US already. Tingshin Sweetheart. Uh, Tingshin Forever Love. You can see a lot of Tingshin, Tingshin, Tingshin. That is lovely. That is stunning. But then, again, if you look at that picture the, on the left, and I give you what a beautiful flower. When you go to Taiwan and you see it in person, it's where you see the, the scope of what they grow. And that's one of the ones that made it to the semi-finalist for grand champion of the show that year. And you see the line with the people there voting. Um, the people pink, different paints, but they're trying to put that yellow, so do the opposite, right? like the old, old, old little lip cross, where we have the white in the lip and the orange, the, 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 pink, uh, the pink in the outside. I love when the hybridizers try to put that yellow in the middle. But then that's a very compact plant. This is a Levio Prince AM of 83. Now you have 20 flowers, two buds, on two cascading inflorescences. It's small for Taiwan standards. But that, trying to put that yellow in the middle, I think it's really cool. Ching Ching Pearl times Lily Barbie. So Ching Ching Pearl's a big harlequin, and then you try to put it into this other cross, and you get this tiny plant. This is one that's also kind of the size. The plant, very compact, very, very small inflorescence, and then you get medium-sized flowers in a very compact plant. So I've got very foolish cheese, got all crazy names, but it's going all over. That's a red ribbon, it's a blue, uh, it's a second place. Use little cherry. I am a sucker for those diamond dust yeah. sparkles on the on the petals. I mm -hmm. love it. that stuff. You can see it in that foreground. I know. <clears throat> little gem stripes, small plant. I mean, you got the pot on the right, and like full of flowers, kind of like right there. Shin Shin Violin, 
So Xi Jinping was a bigger breed, Xi Jinping violin is smaller. <laughs> Yupi Burgundy, again, the size of the plants that you see there is what I wanted to kind of show. Yellow and orange, tons of flowers, one plant. It's just up, oh, red ribbon, second place. It's not even the first place. <laughs> Teaching uh, forever, I think, is for, for uh, forever is right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool, though? I got the first place, Raven. And remember all, all your golden pioker Latin readings. So, uh, Rochidiana type sounds some right, right pioker. So, that picote all around. Again, very compact, very small plants, FCC on this one. Um, you remember when the hard liquid started to come out, that substance was almost like looked like an alligator. It's very rough in the, in the, in the, in the tissue of the, of the flower, and now it's just stunning to look at just when I eat it. Novice deer, sogo yellow trees, so Phalaenopsis beatrice, cross back to a yellow so we can get yellow trees. Still a little tall, but small flowers. This I like. Ox yellow lid, very nice representation of that cross. There's also paths. There's not only Phalaenopsis in the Taiwan show. So this is a couple of paths of words. Bruno, Dendrobium lucitae, <coughs> except one of those species, Dendrobium. Um, Dendrobium yukidaruma nobili. So, that's how you grow it and draw it normally, well grown. Uh -huh. That's stunning. It's just flowers, like 360 of flowers. They're really artists doing this. That's a pretty neat face there, isn't it? Uh, well, it's not, it's not growing on it. It's just show. It's uh, the pot's the regular pot, and they just use the big base for display. This is the exhibit two years ago. This, that's all in Cedium Gorse Rancy. All the yellow is also on cereals. Oh my gosh. It's not a tree. It's a design. <laughs> when you see the exhibits in pictures, you really don't know what you're looking at. That's all on cereals, yellow cereals of that tree. This tree and that tree to make the tree. Mm -hmm. It says grow around it. Uh, So again, I like to take this kind of picture of photography because you can see the, the scope of the exhibit. Of course, this person's taking pictures there. So you see how large in scale the exhibits are. So that's the exhibit hall, different than the show hall for the individual entries. And you have, you know, displays like this, they go crazy with like, you know, it's Asia, so you're gonna, it's gonna be flashy, you're gonna have strobe lights, you're gonna have, it's a little tacky, it gets tacky sometimes, that's what they do. There's no color flow, they just throw colors everywhere, but I think it's pretty. Well, it looks like the Chinese New Year. Exactly, kinda, kinda does, you're right. This is a, a path exhibit, and you have everywhere, it's a cut flowers in the middle with all those, like, cut on the train to do like a waterfall, and you have all these paths, which is everywhere. And you can see the detail of each flower. I mean, each flower is almost a work quality. It's just like, don't know where to look. Do you have an idea how many exhibitors there were? Uh, yeah, um, they, I took several pictures, as you're gonna see in some of the exhibits. Uh, to me, that one was really cool. Um, usually they have um, between uh, 40 to 80 exhibits in the exhibit hall. Some of the larger exhibits are your 2,000, 2,500 square feet exhibits. And then the smallest exhibits, 250 square feet. Mm. Anything that less than 100 square feet of an exhibit, they don't even enter it. It's just, you have to be at least 250. Uh, they do outside exhibits in March because the weather's really nice in Taiwan. So you have all these outside exhibits, some of the vandal vendors, and they come from you know, Singapore, they come from everywhere to exhibit in Taiwan. Um, just so you guys know, in Taiwan, the breeding has always been based on commercial appeal. It's never been based on quality. Very few advertisers in Taiwan 
breed based on, oh, I'm going to create this quality award so I can get an award. No. They breed based on what's appealing to the public, sure. right. which makes sense. Uh, they have big producers and small breeders. So you have the two uh, ends of the spectrum. You have the big producers, which is Norman, for example. He has the 4 million orchid greenhouse growing, growing, bloom within a year from flask to bloom. Take it out, sell it for $30 or $20 on Depot. And then you have Dean Ching, uh, Ching Chang, and all these guys doing the, the, the actual breeding, doing the, the novelty, the new things, and what's coming along, right? Uh, again, they focus on commercial features, tons of flowers, fast growing plants, that's what they want. They don't want a plant that doesn't yield a lot of flowers because they don't want to sell. Like I told you and you saw from two years ago, there's a lot of miniatures coming. There's a big focus on miniatures. There's always something new. There's patents every year on new crosses, so they do patent them. And it's cool to see because there's a section of the show that has the new stuff. So it's like first bloom seedlings, they don't get awarded, but you can see what's coming. It's like a fashion show almost. And you see exactly what's coming in breeding and whatnot. And uh, again, the last bullet here, you should come at least once. You should go to the Taiwan show at least once. It's worth the trip. It's a long trip. It's, the food is fantastic if you like to try new things, but if you don't like to try new things, they do have McDonald's, Krispy Kreme, everything here. <laughs> that was how, when, I let, when, I, when I got to Tokyo the first time, I got off the subway after I came out of the airport, and the first thing I come out of the subway, I see is a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> I was like, wow, I traveled this far to get to Krispy Kreme. But uh, in Taiwan, they, it's, to me it's fascinating because they really live, breathe, Orchids. It's a big industry. The government supports it. Uh, it's not very difficult to get there. You fly from Dallas to Tokyo, and then from Tokyo you take another flight to Taipei, and it's a wonderful country. Very safe, extremely safe. Uh, English is widely spoken, and I don't know. Just uh, maybe I motivate you to go see the show yeah. in 2020. Yeah. You know. Uh, some of these shows are even. Uh, they take. I presume they take a lot of pictures, and you call them up on. Your uh, search engine or YouTube, something mm -hmm. like that. Right. So, you can't make it. That's the next best thing. If you cannot make it, a lot of pictures will be the next best thing, probably. But I agree with you. Um, out of the shows that I've been, to me, this is one of the biggest. And I am a Falenopsis guy, so I have an extra motivation to go to Taiwan sure. and see the show. Uh, if you are thinking of Latin America, I just came back last month from the Medellin Orchid Show in. Colombia. Colombia has a reputation of cartels and drug lords and you're going to get mugged. Colombia is the safest country in Latin America, South America right now. It's extremely safe, very, very well educated. Um, English is spoken pretty much everywhere. Um, the Medellin show, I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to go to the <coughs> Miami shows when they used to do them, or maybe the WLC in Miami. The Medellin show is that big, and you can see all this cool growing stuff. It's really cool. So another one, if you don't want to fly, fly that far to Taiwan, go to Medellin in August, and it's in August, and it coincides with the with the Feria de las Flores, with the flower fair. Mm -hmm. So it's the week that all the florists from the whole world in Colombia is the biggest industry: flowers, cut flowers, roses, everything. So you, there's flowers. Everywhere in the city, it's really quite spectacular to see. Taiwan show is it every year or every two years? It's every year. Every year. What March? March. January. March. March. First week of March. Every year. Mm -hmm. I think you should get a tour going. Ah no, Johnny. No, because they, <laughs> everyone has asked me to do the same thing. You should put a tour together. I don't want to have to hold people like around. I'll tell you how to get there. I'll tell you how to get there and give you all the tips. And you guys can put your own group because I fly, my flying and my traveling is usually very last minute I decide to go or, you know, but this WC I'm probably going, so if I do decide to put a group together, I will let you know. Okay. <laughs> I have a technical question. Uh, you probably know. You see, in all these shows where the spike fell off, of course, has been bent down, growing down, some shingles. Huh? 
how do we as hobbyists how do you bend a spike or when being spiked? From the beginning. From the beginning, without breaking the spike. What, you, what they do in Taiwan, they have, the moment that spikes three inches, yeah. they have the, the, the wire. Now, according to American Orchid Society standards and judging standards, that's illegal because it's considered manipulation. Oh. So, I'm going to tell you what's legal and not legal. It's illegal to manipulate the whole inflorescence, but you can stake the inflorescence up to the first or second uh, flower or, 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 or right. bud, if you will. Uh -huh. So theoretically, theoretically, if you put a, say, wire kind of perfectly shaped, so you can educate that inflorescence when it's two inches tall in the plant. That's what I do with mine. And the reason I do it is, well, up to last year, I used to overhead water in my greenhouse. But now I water to every pot. I did, uh, I switched last year. And trust me, it was worth every penny. I switched to drip irrigation into every pot. But I don't have drips. I have these little sprayers that are really, really nice. And they're super cheap. I'm, I'm, I'm a cheap ass. <laughs> so, uh, so, and it's worked very successfully for me, but just not to divert into two topics, let me finish answering your question. You can theoretically, as that inflorescence grows, you can stake it and it will still grow um, into that wire. And then uh, once it's bent, it's very, it's very flexible once it, it starts developing up to the height. At the very end, on the very top three inches of the inflorescence, that inflorescence is very bendable. Yeah. And you can directly clip it and do the, what they do here. So you, you just got to <coughs> attach it to the, to the wire every once in a while, every week, two weeks. Every just, week, two weeks. Just keep with it. And I use the, 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 the clips that don't actually clip the inflorescence, so it clips to the wire, but they, it just gives a little space so the inflorescence can keep growing, yes. developing. Well, I'll be darn. So I would think that the tenderest, when it's most tender, would make it the easiest to break. Well, you have to be careful. I mean, you cannot yeah. just go by handling. I mean, it takes some uh, experience. Experience to do it, but it's very doable. I do it on my phalaenopsis just because when I used to overhead water, the, the flowers used to break because they're so top heavy. Uh, but I don't overhead water anymore. So this year is going to be interesting because I switched to to the little sprayers in each pot mm -hmm. this year. And let me tell you, I say so much water with that. I just water a little bit to the pot until I fill it up and I'm done. So okay, but you grow, you, you, you grow your fails in a spag, right? I switched half of my collection, so roughly around 200 plants last year to um, Orchiata. Okay. I yet to see the results. I've grown in the other program that we're going to have later for the dendrobiums. You're going to see I grow in, um, in, in gravel similar to the sparrow that stone. the parkers use or the stone that they grow use. Stone. What is it? Oh, grow stone. Grow, whatever yeah, you call it. Grow stone. Yeah. That, the trait name on that. It's like expanded glass. Yeah, it's uh, whatever it is I want it. I love it. <laughs> whatever it is I want it. But, but you got to be careful with what you're growing in. I sectioned my greenhouse, and now my drip irrigation has the Phalaenopsis circuit with just, you know, solenoids like sprinkler system. So I have a Phalaenopsis section, I have a, a dendrobium section, a vanda section that I can deliver water every day to a few vandas. I have to sacrifice something. I love vandas, but something's got to give when you grow growing Phalaenopsis. You cannot really grow everything together. It's just hard. So I only have like 20 vandas of the ones I like the most that I kept in a section of the greenhouse so I can do the daily watering that they require. But my phalaenopsis I water maybe once a week. And the, anything that's potted in uh, media like that, I, I water it almost twice a week in summer. I reduce the watering as the time comes this time of the year. Right, so you grow your fails in sphagnum. Mm -hmm. And in the winter time, with good humidity, once a week or once every 10 days? I go 10 days. Okay. Well, good. 
winter. Hmm? Winter. 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 Shortly. Yeah, winter. Okay. They don't. They, they stay way longer. But remember, oh, the yeah. greenhouse does get drier in winter as well. So you gotta be careful. Yeah. I have. A, I have a. I have humidity. Uh, uh, misters like fog, almost mm -hmm. misters. I call this uh, company Teffen. They sell online these misters, and I've had the same misters on the same pipe for more than ten years, and they do not clog. They do not, and Dallas has the hardest water. How do you spell that? T-E-F-E-N. -E -E I can send you all the the, 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 blog, sure. the link. And they're misty heads, and they're cheap. They're like a dollar something per. Perfect. So you want the orange nozzle. That's the one that has the smallest. Um, it's like they missed. It's like 0.7 gallon per hour or something like that. It's very, very fine. It's almost dust coming out of the mister. And I just screw them into a three-quarter PVC pipe, again, because I'm cheap. So I bought the, 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 the threader for the thread that they come at Home Depot, and I just put it, drill it, thread the pipe directly, and I screw those heads into the pipe directly. And uh, each misting head has a little mesh filter inside, so if you have sediments, it just doesn't come out. Every, twice a year, again, I'm cheap and I'm lazy. So twice a year I go through my misting heads and I just go to the top of the head and I do this just to clean it a little bit and that's all I do. I've had the same misting head for 10 years. Highly recommend those. And you have you have hard water like we do? Yeah. Dallas has Dallas water is better. That's all ours. Dallas water is okay. Dallas water is least bad. The water in Garland where I used to live, it's like chisel. You chisel your 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 your, your shower head every three months. In oh my gosh! Yeah, it's bad. So, so, your drip irrigation system works. Is that the same company? No, I'll tell you where to buy those, and I wish I, I would have taken a picture of those. I might have one or two, but I'll show you. Uh, maybe in my phone I have a couple. There's a company called um, something. I will. I will remember before now at four thirty when I leave. Okay, but it's drip people. It's the drip depot. And what I have is I have the uh, I have a um, they have these stakes. I wish I would have brought some as a sample. They have these little stakes that you buy, they're like four inches tall. And what you do is you I run half an inch uh, drip irrigation in each length of the bench, and then I punch and they sell a one-eighth of an inch pipe that goes from the half an inch pipe to each of the stakes. I'll try to find a picture to project it. Maybe I'll project it on the next presentation. And uh, the way they work, think about this is the stake. So the eighth inch pipe just attaches to the top like that. And it's got a little slit. And when the water comes out, it comes out in one one eighth pattern. So I put it next to the center of the pot of the actual uh, plant, and it literally, and now they came up with a 360 one, which I'm probably going to get, that, but the 180s are good enough. Sometimes I have to put two of them so I can get full coverage, but I can get the whole pot water, and when they're watering, it's so fine, it almost creates a mist around the plant too. They're wonderful. After I change to that, my plants have, my phalaenopsis have just, Right. And again, I'm lazy. I don't like, I don't have the time to go a lot to the greenhouse. Yeah. So I, I've been very successful with that. The drip depot. Does Dottie Woodson have a system sort of like that? She has drip. She has traditional drip. I very very little since Yeah, she has, tra that. she has traditional drip because this is kind of new. Okay. But um, Jim Diffley, one of our student judges, he's the one that started with this. And he started with this, and he recommended them. And he, I told him, bring me a sample. I want to test it before I buy. I commit to a thousand heads, because I have around a thousand plants. So, uh, but it is very economical. I spent like, I think I've spent maybe more than, oh, it's a live show. <laughs> I spent around five hundred dollars total in material, which I don't think is a lot. So you put it in all your plants. Every plant in my greenhouse has individual water, okay. and I can come to my phone, and I can just say, you know, I can come here and connecting, connecting, connecting. 
of course, it's not going to connect. Oh, it is connecting. The humidity system is watering now. Yeah. Or I can come back here and I can say, you know, something like, you know, please water my bandas. Please water my phalaenopsis. Easy. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> and we're going to take a break and get a drink and a cookie, and we'll be back at it too. You know, with our second program. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay.